Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? My name's Tie-Dye. Yeah, I hope you guys had a pretty awesome day today. My day's been pretty awesome so far. So in today's video, what I want to do is bring you guys a tutorial on what texture maps are and how to apply them to your objects to create realistic looking materials. Now, I know this is a pretty basic tutorial for a lot of people out there, but for those of you who have never used physically based rendering uh, for your materials or anything like that, uh, this could be very brand new to you. And I remember when I was trying to learn this stuff, I never had a specific video actually explain to me what a lot of this stuff was so I thought I could take the time and do that for you guys and hopefully you find this helpful hopefully this is something that I can aid in your workflow quite a bit but for those of you who have already you know understood how to use substance painter or 3d code or plug in textures into unreal or anything like that uh, this is probably a bit more of a basic video for you guys but maybe you can you know learn something new and sharpen up your skills anyways uh, if you aren't too too confident with a lot of that workflow so what we're going to be working with today is just this torpedo here. So this is just a basic object that I made for uh, a bit more of a complex scene that I did uh, earlier this year. And essentially, it's just a very, very simple torpedo shape with a bit of an opening in there and uh, some of the internal parts showing. Now, the reason I have this open in Maya is because before you can do any of this, there's one very important step that you have to do, and that is the UVs. Now, for those of you who don't know what UVs are exactly, it's essentially when you take all of the geometry from your 3D model and lay it out into 2D space. And the reason we do this is because as far as 3D materials go, uh, we can't actually save full on material files and move them from program to program, at least not of yet. And uh, so what we do to get around that is we lay out all of our uh, polygons in a 2D viewport here, and I'm not going to exactly show you how to do that in this tutorial. There are plenty of tutorials out there, and I have some on my channel on UVing. But um, essentially what we have to do is lay it out into a 2D view, and this way if we paint onto here, we can save that information and plug it into other applications. Now, for example, if I want to tell a program that the main part of this torpedo is red, and I color in on top of all of these polygons red, which are representing these polygons here, if I color that in red and plug it into the color map channel, it's going to know that, hey, this texture is saying that this part is red. If I wrap that around this certain object, then it's going to sort of display red exactly where we mapped these parts to. And essentially, that is the main process that applies to all of these different maps, but there are plenty more maps to talk about other than just color maps. So let's dive into the Unreal Engine where I have this all set up, and uh, let's actually talk about how we can do this. So once I dive into Unreal, as you can see, this is our final asset here and um, here let me just make it full screen for you and as you can see we have a bunch of stuff going on so as you can see when we get up close to it we have certain parts that are shinier than others for example this has a bit more of a shine to it compared to say over here where the paint is we also have all of this detail where light is getting into these crevices and these cracks here that weren't there on the model before um, and we look around, we see a bunch of different stuff. Obviously, it's more metallic here. Uh, the paint sort of looks like it's dipping in here, which is interesting. And it's, uh, you know, more shiny in certain areas and rougher in other areas. And I'm going to talk about how to apply all of these um, different effects with different maps. And uh, as you see, we have a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to go over all of them really quickly. So let's start with the most basic one of all, and that is the color map. So I'm just going to show you the texture that I use here. And all of these maps I actually had exported out of Substance Painter, so it exports them automatically and that's why they seem a little bit, you know, stretched and weird looking and not as recognizable as if you were to paint it yourself. But just to sort of, you know, go over what this is again, just think about this and where the colors are. And I'm just going to drag over our UV maps for this once again. So this is the tip of the missile, the middle of it uh, up here, is sort of the internal parts, and this is sort of like the tail of it. So with that in mind, and we go back to our texture, as you can see, uh, the colors sort of correspond exactly with where they should be, um, you know, with the right things wrapped around the certain spots that we map them to, and uh, it's just sort of representing where colors should be based on where we laid out those polygons earlier. So let's take a look at what it looks like with just color applied, and we'll start to see why, you know, sometimes color just isn't enough in a lot of cases. So with just color applied, we're getting a very, very... A 2D looking object here. It looks as if this is just someone, you know, printed out a piece of paper and wrapped it around this missile. You know, we don't have any depth to any of this stuff. There's no bumps anymore. It just looks like a dirty piece of paper that we just wrapped around a, a random object that we found. 
and uh, it's not looking too too nice now that being said uh, there are some benefits to just using a color map for example if you're playing a game like league of legends or world of warcraft or dota um, any game like that typically they do just use color maps and the reason that is is because you can get a lot of detail out of these maps if you have professional hand painting uh, artists out there who can do a lot of this stuff and they, they sculpt uh, detail in and then paint over top of it and it looks really really good especially on mobile in a lot of cases they use just a color map and that's because it's a lot less intensive it's only one map compared to multiple and uh, you can get a lot of detail out of it depending on what you're trying to go for for an object like this i probably wouldn't recommend it typically if you're doing anything realistic you're going to use anything or, or a lot more maps than just a, a color map but that being said in certain cases if you're doing anything hand painted especially uh, color maps are definitely a very very wise choice to go by especially if you have certain restrictions and you can't use too many maps but if that's just what a color map looks like it's uh, super super simple it can get a lot done and uh, obviously you can just paint something loose in Photoshop if you want to and apply it. It's really good for like a weapon or something like that. But now let's move on to our next map over here which is our normal map. And normal maps are super, super important. And the reason that it is is because we can get essentially as much information and as much detail as we want onto an object as long as we don't directly affect the actual shape of it. And uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So let me apply our normal map texture. And this is just a normal map. And as you can see, we can see where the paint is chipping away here. We can see scratches. We can see dents and debris. We can see all of this stuff. Um... Even, even here, I added screws in with just normal maps. So normal maps essentially allow us to adjust what's on the surface of our material. And this is great for, for characters, um, for facial details like wrinkles and stuff like that. And uh, chips and armor or, or stuff that you want to add to a weapon such as uh, scratches along the blade and stuff. So in this case, since I have a very old missile, I have uh, spots where paint is chipping away and a scratches are added on top of here. And it reacts to light in real time, which is really, really cool. And that's one of the most powerful things about a normal map. There's multiple ways to make normal maps, but this is just what it does and uh, why you'd want to apply it. So definitely in a lot of cases, normal maps are a must for many of your objects. Uh, moving on, we have the metallic map. Now this is our first black and white map, and there's multiple black and white maps. And um, the cool thing about this one is it sort of tells our object where things are metal and where things are not. Now what I mean by that is everything here on this map, which is once again laid on top of our UV coordinates, uh, whatever is white, it tells our game engine or whatever we're plugged into, that part of the object is metal. That part is metallic and anything that is black is not metal. Now you can use grays, uh, obviously the darker the gray, the less metal, the um, lighter the gray, the more metallic, but uh, essentially here we just have whites and blacks more or less, so uh, these parts here along the... Missile are telling the engine that, you know, where these parts are, uh, that's where paint is chipped away and that's where there's metal. So if I apply that on, as you can see, it just sort of gives us like a metallic shine here and everything else is matte. And then the inside of here is mostly metal, so it's super, super shiny. You can barely uh, pick up any light on that whatsoever. But uh, shiny parts, shiny parts, and as we know and as we saw earlier, this is where the actual paint is chipped away and the metal uh, under underneath is uh, exposed and the rest of it is just sort of matte because it's not a metallic object this is where the paint is so we have it black on our map because there's nothing metal there and uh, that is pretty cool it's super useful sometimes you'd want to just sort of assume that you could just make it uh, less rough because metal sort of seems to be shiny but uh, met uh, metal objects have their own properties that are very different than just having um, a high reflectiveness so metallic maps are very important if you're doing anything metal they're definitely not always needed like if you're doing a wooden chair of course you wouldn't need a metallic map or a metal map um, but for an object like this, it's, it's pretty much a must, um, and for many objects as well. And moving on to our second black and white map, this is our roughness map. Now, roughness maps essentially, like the name suggests, uh, tell us where something is rough and where something isn't rough. And this is a super important map. If I were to stress uh, anything, it would be that roughness maps have so much potential and so much power. You know, people usually think that it is basically the base color and the normal maps that have the most power. But roughness is also extremely beneficial to your assets. As you can see here, um, whatever is white is representing what is super rough and whatever is black is super shiny. Typically, you don't have anything that's solid white or solid black black um, we do have some very very bright grays in here but nothing solid white or solid black uh, these parts here that are solid black are actually not on the mesh at all there's nothing there to uh, display our information onto and essentially anything gray once again the darker is going to be the shinier and the lighter is going to be the more rough and uh, with this information 
I'm just going to apply this on. We can get a lot of detail. So as you can see here, we can see um, essentially where the paint is, where the metal is as well, very, very easily, where there's a lot of grunge on here, um, where there's sort of splatters, and, and it's really simple to see where the metal is once again because, you know, it's a combination of uh, roughness and metallic that gives us that shine. Um, but more or less, we can see where a lot of the debris is on here. More or less, that's what we're going for with this. Um, and you can get a very, very powerful look. But this is just how uh, reflective certain areas are. And we can see all of this information on here. There's so much to take in based on just seeing what's reflective and what's not reflective. And it goes a long way. So I definitely wouldn't uh, undermine the power of a roughness map. And finally, our very final map is our ambient occlusion map. And this essentially just tells the engine or whatever we're working in um, where exactly shadows are on our map. So this is the main part. And since it's exposed so much, it's surrounded by light, there's nothing too dark. Um, this is sort of the interior part, and uh, there's a lot of shadows on that. And this is sort of like the the middle ground. Some parts are shown, some parts aren't. And uh, it sort of just tells the engine where the shadows are. Uh, if I apply that directly, you won't be able to tell because the background material is... Um, essentially black so you won't be able to see the shadows but if I put the full thing on again as you can see we're getting some serious shadows in here and this is thanks to the ambient occlusion I can actually adjust that by um, showing you in our post processing but if I uh, turn up our ambient occlusion and turn it down you can see sort of at the bottom there how the shadows are affecting this might not be the best object for it but when you get a bunch of objects in a scene uh, AO definitely goes a very very long way but essentially that's how all the maps work together as you can see with everything applied we sort of get uh, sort of this this scratchy information that shows us where the paint is chipping away with depth and then as well as the metallicness here uh, the rust is having a different roughness compared to the metal underneath uh, this is super shiny because it's interior but there's a bit of rust that is sort of breaking up the the flow of the shine here and all in all, it just sort of works together. This is basically all the maps that you use for a typical uh, realistic looking asset in a PBR rendering situation. PBR, once again, is physically based rendering for those of you who are wondering. And um, when they all come together, it definitely looks really, really nice. Now, you can hand paint all of these in Photoshop, but most 3D painting software such as Substance Painter, uh, Designer, 3D Coat, the Quixel Suite will export all of these maps for you. And then you just sort of have to plug them in to an application such as uh, the Unreal Engine or Marmal Set or something like that by yourself. And I'll just show you exactly what that looks like here. Um, this is the texture that I have uh, with everything plugged into it. As you can see, I just sort of have color plugged into color. And that's simply just by clicking and dragging this into there. Uh, this is metallic into metallic. I just sort of have the um, values adjusted a bit because I don't have them exactly as I want to. Typically, you would just plug this in as well and plug this one in as well. But I just sort of adjusted some of the numbers. So you can just ignore this this part here. Uh, AO or ambient inclusion into the ambient inclusion and normal into normal. And it's as simple as plugging everything into where they need to go and then dragging and dropping it onto your material. And then the engine will do the rest for you. So that's essentially it. Um, if you want to, there are some options here to sort of show you just specific things. So if I go to lit, it'll show everything. Uh, wireframe will show you just wireframe. But this is where the cool stuff comes in. Detailed lighting will show you the um, normal map with normal lighting as well, which is super, super cool. Um, there's a couple of other things here. Uh, reflections, not too, too nice. Um, Lighting only is just going to be, you know, the silhouette of the shape, the base of the shape. But there are options in here to show you each specific map and what they're doing, just like I showed you before. So you won't have to make all these different materials. But I thought this would be the best way to sort of teach you guys and, and introduce you guys to how a lot of the stuff works. So anyways, guys, hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you guys are new to this, hopefully you learned something new. And if you aren't, uh, thanks for sticking around and watching anyways. Hopefully you did pick up something new or, or hopefully just a bit of a refresher on a lot of the stuff if you haven't done it in a while. But uh, anyways, guys, a like on this video would go a long way comment on this video if uh, you have any suggestions for new tutorials and if you want to see tutorials like this early I actually post them all on my patreon a little bit early a couple days early so a link to that will be in the description below if you don't want to support my channel and uh, get access to these tutorials a little bit early but uh, other than that guys thank you so much for watching my name has been tie-dye and I will catch you in the next video see ya